ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions in the Quran the power of his remembrance its ability to have impact on the heart its ability to reduce the amount of sin that the individual commits <coughs> The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as he mentioned in the Quran, وَنَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُ Those who believe and whose hearts find tranquility with the remembrance of Allah isn't it with the remembrance of Allah that the hearts find tranquility? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Inna fi dunya jannatan Inna fi dunya jannatan Man lam yadkhulha lam yadkhul jannat al-akhirah Qalu wa ma hiya ya imam Faqala mahabbatullah wa dhikruhu Mahabbatullah wa dhikruhu Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said that Inna fi dunya jannatan In this dunya there is a jannah There is a paradise Man lam yadkhulha lam yadkhul jannatu al-akhirah Whoever does not enter into the paradise in this life Will not enter into the paradise in the hereafter They said what is the jannah on earth? He said mahabbatullah wa dhikruhu he said, the love of Allah and His remembrance. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a jannah, it is a paradise within itself. Because you enter, when you begin to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you enter into a realm that only a few are in. As we know in paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command um, the, he will command the people that are in paradise to go to the hellfire and to extract how many people will come out of the hellfire. One out of every thousand. Only one out of every thousand will come out of the hellfire. So there's a very small amount of people in paradise in comparison to the people in the, hereafter, uh, in the hellfire. He said that whoever does not enter into the paradise in this life will not enter into the paradise of the hereafter and that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his remembrance قال ربيع ابن خثين أقل الكلام إلا من تسعين speak very little unless it, it revolves around nine things أقل الكلام إلا من تسعين speak very little unless your words revolve around nine things a takbir the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar what tasbih praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tasbih means tanzihullah and min, min kulli aybin is to remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any flaw or deficiency that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no flaws or deficiency this is what subhanallah means. What tahleel and la ilaha illallah, the statement la ilaha illallah, which is from the kunuz al jannah, it is from the treasures of paradise. What tahmeed and to say alhamdulillah, as we spoke yesterday, one of the scholars said that when I'm tested, I say alhamdulillah in four instances. When a test or calamity comes from me, comes to me, I say Alhamdulillah in four instances. I say Alhamdulillah number one because the trial or tribulation that I am experiencing currently, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. 
I say Alhamdulillah for the second time because of the sabr, the gift of patience that the trial and tribulation brings. And even after the trial and tribulation subsides, you get to keep the gift of patience. Patience doesn't leave you. Whatever patience you developed at the time that you are experiencing your trial or tribulation, after it's over with, you get to keep the gift of patience. Balash. You keep it for free. He said, Alhamdulillah for the third time, because my trial or tribulation reminds me of the reward that is waiting for me in the hereafter. It is that small light at the end of the tunnel. And I say Alhamdulillah for the fourth time, لِأَنَّهُ لَمْ تَكُنْ فِي دِينِي And I say Alhamdulillah for the fourth time because my trial or tribulation was not in my deen. I was tested in my dunya, but I was not tested in my religion. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ As Allah says in the Quran, and fitna, trial and tribulation, in this instance, it means Kufr is worse than dying. Being tested in your religion to the point where you apostate from your deen or have doubts about the existence of Allah, it is worse than dying. Because at least you die, you die on obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you die on tawheed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if you are tested in your religion and you begin to have doubt about the existence of Allah, about the power of Allah, about the omnipotence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you might die as an apostate or a hypocrite, which is even worse. He says, so if you can lessen your speech and reduce it to nine things, number one, saying subhanAllah, number two, saying la ilaha illallah, Number three, saying Allahu Akbar. Number four, su'alak al-khair. Someone asking you something about something good about the religion and you respond to it. Someone asking you something about good. Asking you a question that revolves around something good and you answer it. And you get the reward. Some of the Sahaba used to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, kulli fil islami qawlan la as'alu ghayrak. Say to me a word in Islam, give me a piece of advice in Islam that I don't have to ask anyone else about. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Kul amantu billah Say, I believe in Allah and then afterwards be upright. Can you imagine the person who responds to that piece of nasiha, that piece of advice that you provided for the person? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Addalu al khair kafa'iri. The person who directs the person to do something good it's just as the person who does it means he gets the same reward as the person who does it. Su'alak al khair. Someone asking you about something good from the religion and you respond to it. Number five is to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from evil. Make this from your daily speech. Seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil. وَأَمْرُكَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And enjoining upon people good. Encouraging people to good to do good. This is one of the simat. This is one of the characteristics of the believer. The characteristics of the believer is that they enjoy what is good. They forbid what is evil. And they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the characteristics of the believer that we have left off today simply because it's not my business. I'm not going to say anything to him because it's not my business. It is your business. If the person was doing something haram, it would be your business because you would go and tell everybody what you saw him doing. It's only our business when it's haram. But when the person needs to be directed to, towards something, it's none of my business. I'm not going to say anything to him. This is part of our religion. To enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. And he said, And to forbid what is evil. Al-Quran, And to recite Quran. So if you can speak and reduce your speech to these nine things, Alhamdulillah, we would speak less and we would do more remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lastly, قال ابن قيم رحم الله تعالى إن العبد لا يأتي يوم القيامة بسيئات أمثال الجبال فيجد لسانه قد هدمها من كثرة ذكره Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that the servant may come on the day of judgment. Yati yawm al-qiyamah. Walahu sayyiat amthal al-jibal. And he may have sins that are the size of mountains. 
sins, the signs, the size of mountains. He said, وَقَدْ يَجِدُ لِسَانَهُ قَدْ هَدَمَهَا And he may find that his tongue will knock these mountains down by abundantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. That you was in your car on your way to work and you were saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Some of the scholars of the past, as it was mentioned by Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, ta'ala, that in between his answering of questions, you could hear him saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Then someone would ask a question, Ya Sheikh, Indi su'al, Indi su'al, Fadl. And while he's asking the question, the Shaykh is saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Now, and then he will answer the person's question. But never leaving a moment free where his tongue is not wet with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At work, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned about the story of Imam Ahmed Ma'al Khabbaz, the person who was cooking bread, the baker. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala traveled to a masjid and the guy who cleans the masjid put him out the masjid. Didn't know it was Imam Ahmed. Put him out the masjid. And when the baker saw Imam Ahmed put out the masjid, no one knew who he was. He told him, you can come stay in my bakery as I, I bake bread until the morning comes, until Salatul Fajr. So Imam Ahmed went and stayed with him in his bakery. And as the man is baking the bread, he's praising Allah subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So Imam Ahmed said, Ya Khabbaz, and indi su'al. I have a question to ask you. He said, Hal wajatta li tasbihika hadha, wa takbirika wa tahlilika hadha, hal wajatta laha fa'ida? Did you find any benefit in saying, Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, while you're working? He said, Yes. He said, I found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma Allah illa stajaba li illa da'watan wahida. He said, I never made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he remembered, he, he answered my dua, with the exception of one. All the time I'm in my shop, I'm saying, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and the benefit that came from that is that I never made dua to Allah for anything except that he responded to me. Except one dua. Imam Ahmed said, well, what is that dua? He said, li an ara Imam Ahmed. <laughs> he said, he never made, he never answered, he answered all of my dua with the exception of one. Imam Ahmed said, well, what was that dua? He said, that I see Imam Ahmed. <laughs> he said, well, I'm Imam Ahmed. <laughs> I was literally dragged to you. <laughs> the person dragged me out of the masjid because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was responding to your dua. Here I am. La ilaha illallah. So this is, shows you the power of the forgiveness, the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the abla yati yom al qiyama bi sayyat amfal al jibal wa kal yajidu lisanahu kad hadamaha bi kathra ta dikirillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that the servant may come on the day of judgment with sins the size of mountains and will find that his tongue will have knocked those mountains down by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. That the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and Allah is aware of what you do. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.